Today's book is called, What Do You Do When Something Wants to Eat You? And it was written by Steve Dinkins. Most animals face the constant danger of being eaten by other animals. This book shows a few of the ways that they try to avoid this fate. So this page right here told us what the main idea of the whole book is. It's going to be talking about different ways that animals try to keep from being eaten. So when we read about specific animals and the things that they do to keep from being eaten, those are the details in the book. So let's see, this is an octopus. It says, when an octopus is threatened, it squirts a, a cloud, I'm sorry, it squirts a thick cloud of black ink into the water, confusing its attacker. That is a specific detail of how the octopus keeps from being eaten. The bar bombardier beetle defends itself. Look, it's getting ready to be eaten by that rat. Let's see, what does it do to defend itself? By shooting a mixture of hot chemicals from its rear end into the face of an attacker, it can shoot up to 500 times in one second. Ooh, yuck. If a puffer fish is in danger, it takes in water and swells up like a prickly balloon, making itself almost impossible to swallow. So far, they've all had very different ways of protecting themselves and keeping themselves from being eaten. But they're all doing these things for the same reason. They're trying to not get eaten by something else, right? The glass snake is really a lizard without legs. When it is grabbed by the tail, its tail breaks into many small wiggling pieces. And then you can get away. The pangolin protects itself. So that's a pangolin right here. Cheetah wants to eat it. Let's see what it does. By rolling into an armor-plated ball, the basilic lizard is known in South America as the Jesus Christ lizard. It can escape its enemies by running across the surface of ponds and streams using its large feet and great speed to keep it from sinking into the water. They can run across the water. That's pretty cool. When it feels threatened, the hog-nosed snake rolls onto its back, sticks out its tongue, and plays dead. This is a good defense because many predators prefer to kill their own food. So if they think that if it looks dead, then whatever wants to eat them isn't going to want to eat them anymore because, because they don't want to eat a dead animal. Brightly colored clownfish escapes danger by hiding in the poisonous tentacles of the sea anemone. The clownfish is immune to the poison, but any predator who follows is badly stung or killed. So it hides in these. The hoverfly is a harmless insect without a sting, but it can protect itself from predators by mimicking the appearance of a wasp. That means it makes it look like a wasp. So those other animals are going to be afraid to eat it because wasps can sting, can't they? The gliding frog lives in trees in the forests of Asia. It can escape predators by using its large webbed feet to glide as far as 50 feet to reach another tree. So I bet it almost looks like it's flying from tree to tree. When it spreads its wings to fly, the silk moth 
reveals two large spots that look like eyes on its wings. These can startle an attacker and give the silk moth time to escape. Because its predator might think that it's another animal with large eyes looking at it and it scares it away. The Javanese leaf insect looks almost exactly like a real leaf. This makes it very difficult for enemies to see. The flying fish escapes danger by leaping from the water, spreading its wing-like fins, and gliding as far as a thousand feet. The blue-tongued skink, right here, startles attackers by sticking out its large, bright blue tongue and wiggling it from side to side. Ooh, that would scare me too. What would you do if something wanted to eat you? I can think of a lot of things that I would do. What would you do? That is the end.